From the station working for you, this is WRTV News at Noon, streaming now. From here all the way in here, that's another 45 minutes. So there's an hour and 45 minutes right there. Well, some lines were long, others were not, as voters continue to head out to the polls as we hit the halfway mark on Election Day voting. Our Election Day live coverage here on WRTV continues right now with the news at noon. Thanks for joining us here on this historic day across central Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. Todd Clausen is joining me in studio today. And Todd, you're kind of the man of the day. <laughs> All those folks who are waiting in line, some of them for an hour or more today, they are greeted with sunshine. And that's about all we can ask for on a November day. Yeah, you know, on election day, you know you're going to be waiting in lines in most locations. You want nice weather. Uh, and you're not even just standing in line. Getting to the polls, you want great weather. And that's exactly what we have uh, today. Look behind me. What a beautiful shot from IMS. We got the foliage changing here as you look towards downtown. And there is not a cloud in the sky uh, here on this Tuesday afternoon. Absolutely picture perfect. And with all that sunshine out there, uh, temperature is very seasonable. In fact, our normal high this time of year is 59 degrees and we're above that already in Bloomington with the noon readings 60 in Lafayette 58 in Indianapolis and these temperatures will continue to go up another couple degrees here this afternoon as everybody will be climbing up into the low 60s so clear skies anywhere you go will expand out and look at the Midwest there's really nothing going on and that's the nice weather we're going to enjoy not only today uh, but all the way through much of the remainder of the week so about 62 degrees in the city for your high temperatures some areas to the south and west probably get into the mid to upper 60s as the clo uh, polls close at 6 o'clock. 56 degrees with clear skies and then the rest of the evening is nice and calm as well. We have some 70s in our future, Lauren. More on that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thank you. You now have less than six hours to cast your vote here across central Indi Indiana if you haven't already done so. Voting appears to have been brisk in Marion County today, but the length of the line really varies depending on the vote center you choose. One of those locations that we showed you moments ago was the Benjamin Benjamin Harrison Presidential Home near downtown Indianapolis off Delaware. And our Nicole Griffin is out there live right now with what the lines are looking like. Nicole, good afternoon to you. What's it like out there? Lauren, good afternoon. Well, you can see the line of voters right behind me here waiting to vote here at the Benjamin Harrison presidential site. We are told that just over 200 people have voted here at this site today. And I just talked to this woman here. She said she's been in line since 1050, right? Yeah. What made you want to come out today on election day to make sure your vote is counted? Well, I know how important it is to vote, so I have to do my part. Um, some people don't believe that it's important to vote, but it is, you know, every voice counts. And with the early voting, uh, what made you want to actually come out and be out here on Election Day? Because um, I knew it was important. I knew I had to do my job. I know that, you know, I am one person, but I know that I can make a difference. So mm -hmm. I knew I had to come out and show out. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. And we do know there are only two machines inside this building. So all of these voters are waiting to vote on those two machines. Social distancing is in place. And the president and CEO tells us that is actually kind of slowing things down here at this location today. We're going to go ahead and send it back to you, Lauren, in the studio. Right, Nicole, thank you so much for that update. And voter activity appears to be brisk across all central Indiana counties despite this ongoing pandemic. That's been true out in Hancock County since early voting began. And that's where we find our own Kelsey Anderson live this midday. She's in McCordsville with more information on the voting there, plus how some lucky voters who may have to wait in line are getting fed. Kelsey, good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon. So yeah, we're here at the McCordsville Town Hall where essentially there's no wait at all. I heard someone come out and they were on the phone say, oh, it just took me just two minutes, which is not the case for early voting. I talked to Hancock County Clerk Lisa Loftring. She says 33,000 Hancock County residents voted early in this year's election. So she says the lines have been pretty smooth all across the county today and this morning. And she says they expect that to continue throughout the day. So now we're getting into that lunch hour. So we're starting to get a little bit more of that rush and Fox Garden they're here this morning with their food truck and they're pretty excited to be here so can you tell me a little bit about why you guys came right here well uh, we just came here to serve really good food to be honest and also you know figure the food trucks not going out on a Tuesday so this is probably a great opportunity to serve you know people to come into the restaurant and really make some money and uh, Honestly, serve hot coffee at 6 a.m. So, you know, everybody needs that on Election Day. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here and feeding those voters. And again, polls are open here until 6. 
And in Hancock County, you can vote at any precinct. You don't have to go to a certain one. It is a vote center county, so you can go to any county or any, excuse me, any voting center in the county that you need. That way you can go to one that's on your way home or closer to your work. For now, it's back to you, Lauren. Kelsey, thank you for your help this afternoon. Get yourself some food to eat. We appreciate it. Well, we can tell you there are a handful of problems reported at different voting sites across Marion County in the early morning hours. The Marion County Clerk's Office tells us about 10 of the county's vote centers did not include keys in the inspector's kits. That led to some people not being able to vote when the polls opened at 6 o'clock this morning. This is one of the sites that was impacted here on your screen, Woodfield Crossing at the Dean Evans Community Center. Voters were eventually able to get into that polling place around 7 o'clock this morning. It was also a busy election day down in Johnson County. Our photojournalist Jason Ronimus shot this video from the White River branch of the Johnson County Library in Greenwood. The line there stretching a long way out the door as voters work to maintain social distancing. But in some locations, voting was quick and it was easy. Our own Megan Sanctorum sent us this picture from Banker's Life Fieldhouse. She says she was in and out there in just minutes. Banker's Life and Lucas Oil Stadium have both reported little in the way of voting lines so far today, so you may want to head out there if you're still looking to cast your ballot. Well, even before the polls opened today, Indiana had already set records for the number of voters making their voices heard. A record number of Hoosiers voting early this year, with many taking advantage of our new satellite early voting locations. The rush to vote early was especially evident up in Hamilton County, where early voting almost matched the entire 2016 presidential vote. With tens of thousands of Hoosiers mailing an absentee ballots this year, that means that counting those votes could take a lot of time. You, you reach a point where you, you don't have enough floor space to space workers out, socially distance, and then be able to have your teams to process. So we are at our max here uh, today. <laughs> Well, taking a look at some of the early voting numbers, the Indiana Secretary of State's office says more than 1.8 million Hoosiers had already cast their votes before the polls even opened today. That's more than two-thirds of the presidential vote from the 2016 election. More than half a million Hoosiers voted by mail this year, which is also a record. WRTV.com is your home for everything happening on Election Day today. You can follow along with our live blog for news all about today's vote as it's happening in real time. That and much more is at WRTV.com slash election 2020. Next on the news at noon, the latest on the COVID-19 pandemic. We'll also show you how the increase in cases mean you may have to look harder if you're trying to check out your favorite book. Todd and Lauren, a beautiful election day in progress weather wise across central Indiana with temperatures in the 50s and 60s. And we're going even warmer as we go into the rest of the week. You can see in Nebraska close to 70 degrees. I think we get there by tomorrow and then above 70 degrees just in time for the weekend. We'll talk all about it coming up when the news at noon continues right here on WRTV. Welcome back to the news at noon. The numbers are still high, but there was a slight down downturn in the COVID-19 cases reported yesterday or today. Rather, the state health department reports moments ago that 2,951 new cases are reported here in the state of Indiana. Now that number is far below 3,000 for only the second time in the past six days. However, the state also announced 50 additional deaths connected with COVID-19. That brings Indiana just shy of 4,200 deaths since this pandemic began. The positive test rate also remains high. The seven day average is now standing at 16.2%. That's for unique individuals. Well, the Indianapolis Public Library is making a schedule change due to the increased spread of the coronavirus. Starting this week, the library will no longer be open on Sundays and all locations will shift Tuesday hours from noon to 8 p.m. The library says the closure will reduce cross branch staffing. So starting on Wednesday, all branches will be open Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. Tuesdays will be noon to 8. The Central Library will observe those same hours, but they'll close at 5 on Fridays and Saturdays. The new schedule is expected to continue until at least the end of the calendar year. Well, they say they are getting ready just in case. Next, why some business owners are saying that they're taking precautions for what they believe could happen after the votes are counted today. And here's a live look on this election day over the Circle City from our tower camera view to the west at this hour. The southwest, you can see clear blue skies out there as you're heading out to vote. We'll get Todd's full forecast coming up just after the break. Stick around.
Well, some businesses downtown have been getting ready for possible election night unrest. Wooden boards went up over the buildings and windows here of some of those buildings downtown. And some of the owners of the company shared their concerns with WRTV's own Cameron Riddle. With just hours until the polls close at 6 o'clock Tuesday night, businesses downtown spent Monday boarding up windows and preparing for the unexpected. The fear is that we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow and we don't know who's going to be upset and we don't know what they're going to do. Um, and I, I can't afford to replace another window. Danielle Cooney is the owner and general manager of Supremacy, the soup shop on Monument Circle. The restaurant was one of several that boarded up Monday afternoon. After seeing her store damaged this summer, Cooney says the cleanup process is not something she wants to go through again. We were more fortunate than some of our neighbors, um, but we did have to replace a window back in May. On the other end of Market Street sits Jack's Donuts. That place was ground zero when windows started to shatter as peaceful protests turned into violence and destruction. Despite being hard hit this summer, owner Chris Carnivis originally had no plans to board up as recently as this morning. I feel that we shouldn't really have to board up if the city is going to protect us. The new glass filling the windows of the downtown donut shop cost Carnivus thousands of dollars. With that price tag in mind while watching neighboring businesses board up, Carnivus changed his mind and says not following suit is a risk he can't take. His store will now get boarded up in the middle of election day. It's cheaper to board up than it is to remodel again and be closed for several days. And who knows how much damage, if there will be any damage, how much they will do this next time around. Cameron Riddle, WRTV. Cameron, thank you. The business owners say they've been in contact with IMPD and they have not been wa made aware of any threats that are planned or any planned protests at this time. But as one business owner put it, they'd rather be safe than sorry. Well, we know kids see this election coverage too, so they may be wondering, do they talk about it? Do you talk to them about it? Dr. Katherine Agbertson with the IU School of Education says like, yeah, you should talk with your kids. It's important to have these conversations with your children. By ignoring it, you can create mystery around the elections and around things that matter in their day-to-day -day lives. So she encourages talking about the issues and values that matter to your family and preparing kids to deal with anyone who may have differing opinions. One of the things that's really important for families to know is that if we do not talk about elections in our families, especially and even when we have differing views, we're not going to be able to do it when we're not in our families, right? We're not going to be able to do it with our neighbors and with our communities. and that rich discussion and people asking questions and listening is something that we can teach our children and they can grow up and do that. And it just makes well, Dr. Egbertson there says that you can start the conversation by asking your kids some questions like, what do you know about this particular issue? Do you have any questions about the elections that are happening right now? She says it's also important to teach your kids about media literacy at home. So watch the news that together, read the news as a family, open up about those conversations and let them ask the questions and then you can offer your perspective and then ask them if they need help understanding anything. So some good things to keep in mind as we're talking Talking about elections today and Todd as people are heading out to vote they have great weather if they need to stand in lines we saw some beautiful sunrise photos earlier this morning as folks are waiting in line what can yeah. they expect for the rest of the day you know more clear skies lots of sunshine and the temperature is obviously very comfortable uh, here this afternoon they were a little on the cool side for the early voters this morning when we were in the 30s but we're up into the 50s and 60s already here at this noon hour and really you can't ask for much better weather at the beginning of November for an election day with the above normal temperatures the sunshine and not much of a wind out there, but we're actually going to see better days ahead compared to today, at least weather wise, uh, because warmer temperatures will continue to move in as well as the dry conditions uh, continuing across uh, the area. Look at this. There's not a cloud in the sky. Can't really see, but I'm sure there's plenty of golfers maybe out there on the Brickyard uh, uh, Golf Course. That'd be a great place to be or any golf course here across central Indiana this afternoon uh, after you cast your vote. Just keep in mind, if you do have evening plans, sunset now is at 540 uh, this evening. 
We're at 60 in Bloomington and Lafayette, as well as Tipton 56 in Richmond. 58 is the temperature at the airport in Indianapolis, and everybody's within a couple degrees of each other at this noon hour, and that's the way it remains throughout the afternoon because we're all in this same air mass. There's not much of a difference uh, where you go in central Indiana, away from Indianapolis, uh, that you're going to see much different weather than what you're seeing uh, in the city. 63 by 2 p.m. That should be our high temperature, and then as the polls close, 6 p.m., 56 degrees. But here's where the highs should get to in many locations. The best potential for some warmer airs off to the west, mid 60s in Lafayette, as well as Peru, a little cooler to the east, but still above normal in Richmond with that temperature of 62 degrees. Radar is quiet. That's the way it's going to stay throughout the day today. No threat of any rain uh, for Election Day or really going forward. Look at all the clear skies back off to our west, and that's what will be heading in our direction over the course of the next couple days. So mainly clear tonight. It's not as cool as it has been across uh, the area. You think back to Monday morning, we were in the 20s. This morning, we were in the 30s. Tomorrow morning, we're starting the day off in the 40s, so not bad at all. 45 in Bloomington, 44 in Peru, and then throughout the day tomorrow, it's another really terrific day with sunny skies from start to finish. 61 already by the noon hour tomorrow with high temperatures in the upper 60s as you make your way uh, across the central Indiana. A great day to be outside if you could do so. And then looking ahead, Thursday, there's just a little bit of a change. Thursday, I think we bring in just a little more in the way, a cloud cover across the area, uh, but nothing major. We're not expecting any rain, 66 degrees. But then look at the weather on Friday, 68. And then there it is, Saturday. Start making your weekend plans uh, right now because not only is Saturday going to be 70 degrees, but as we continue out in a, to Sunday, we're looking at temperatures in the low 70s and the same for Monday as well. So it's a long, dry stretch of above normal temperatures, Lauren, that I think all of us will like here this first week of November. All right, that looks pretty good, Todd. Thank you. So if you want to vote in person, but you don't have a ride there today, there's some free options for you. All Indigo fixed route and open door service will be fare free today from the start of service until 10 p.m. You can also check out a bike at any Pacers bike share station for free with some restrictions. You'll need to use a credit card and any trip longer than 60 minutes will cost 15 cents per minute. Also, the organization Go Vote Indy is offering free rides to the polls. Availability for this service is limited, however, so you'll need to reserve a ride. For that, you can call 317-804-1083. Well, don't forget, our Election Day live coverage continues all day long here on WRTV. You can join us on the WRTV mobile app and your favorite streaming device. We have all of the live returns just as they're coming in tonight. You can also join us for a full recap tonight on the news at 11 and, of course, tomorrow morning on Good Morning Indiana. When we come back here, it is time for our pet of the week. So I want you to meet Abigail. We'll show you how you can make Abigail part of your family, this sweet elderly pup here. We'll have more on that. Plus, the final check of your forecast for today coming up here when the news at noon continues on WRTV. So it is Tuesday and it's time to try and find a new home for our pet of the week from Indy Humane. So today say hello to this easygoing girl named Abigail. Abigail is 10 years old and Indy Humane says she's the perfect binge watching buddy. She's very people oriented, but Indy Humane says that Abigail would prefer a home without young kids where she can be the only pet. Her foster parent says Abby is a little couch potato. She takes walks once or twice a day, but then they're generally not too long and then she gets tired, heads back over to the couch. So Abigail is available for an adoption fee of $160. You can meet her or learn a little bit more about her today by visiting IndyHumane.org. And she is a cutie, Todd. If you are heading out to take a walk or maybe go to the polls today, you've giving us a great forecast. Yeah, it really is, Lauren. Well, lots of sunshine, no weather-related issues, highs in the low 60s in most locations, cooling into the 50s this evening. Tomorrow, great day, sunny 68. A little more in the way of cloud cover around on a Thursday, but then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, absolutely beautiful. Start making those plans now with highs in the 70s. Todd, thank you, and thanks for joining us and making WRTV your choice for news. Stay tuned all day long on our streaming services and join us for the news at 5. Have a great election day.